Hey guys and welcome back. So we just did the unboxing and overview of the EX2 and right now we are going to check the interface, uh, the web interface of the X2. And before we go and do that, um, I would just, would just like sorry, to point out um, one thing, which is the LED indicators and the color codes. Um, as you can see right now, the, the, the device itself, it's on sleep mode. So it took about 10 minutes to get uh, into sleep mode and you don't hear um, any sound at all. Um, so working the same way that uh, my previous version of the my book live did uh, 10 minutes without any activity it will go roughly 10 minutes it will go um, to sleep and stay there very quiet once you um, go and grab a file it will wake up or if you plug the usb it will wake up so the sleep mode will leave one uh, power led indicator flashing slowly uh, in and out and the two uh, LED indicators of the hard drives are off so this is the sleep mode uh, and once again you don't hear anything at all uh, regarding the color codes so I found out here on the website of uh, small net builder you can check for it if you check uh, my cloud x2 color codes you will find this site very easily and they did a great job <laughs> placing here the color codes so when it's powered down uh, it's everything off when it's in sleep mode it's as it is right now if everything is blue it's because you have activity on the device so uh, lights will flash for the hard drive number one and hard drive number two if anything is red if you see any red light, it's a warning. One of the drives, or maybe two, are failing, so you will have to uh, replace the drives. Uh, it will be very unlucky if the, if the two fail at the, at the same time. Uh, and if you find a yellow light, uh, it's because something is wrong on your network. Um, and that being said, let's go to the... web interface and here we go so the welcome screen <clears throat> will give you um, a few very important information <coughs> sorry um, in this case for me it's in RAID 1 so it says capacity 3.9 uh, terabytes free which I haven't placed anything yet I'm going to plug in my USB cable, my USB pen, and so it recognizes here. Uh, and the drive will, it's already flashing the light, so the drive will wake up when you plug in any device or start messing around with, uh, with this. It's already blinking, as you can see, and... Um, very very soon it will I'm already hearing the the drive spin so there it is uh, <laughs> it's waking up right now okay so in this screen you have some as I was saying some um, information network activity which at the moment we don't have any activity at all uh, CPU usage RAM usage um, it's using well just went back to 0% because we're not doing anything uh, on RAM using because it's powering on so and then in here it will show the devices that you configure to use on the cloud uh, devices your uh, smartphones and uh, tablets and things like that users I have to use created and apps that you have working uh, it will also show you the diagnosis and the version of the firmware. I just updated mine, um, so it's up to date. And then we have a users tab where you uh, can configure if um, if you want to enable passwords and uh, if you want to enable all the access to the folders that you create, or if you want to restrict um, 
some folders to uh, to a certain person and this will be useful if you are in a company and you want to uh, share a certain folder with um, your associate uh, or employees or something like that um, so all you have to do is create user and then cho choose sorry choose the username uh, first name last name and his email and you will have a, a new user once that it's done you can select or not if you are going to use passwords uh, and if you are inserting this member in a certain group group is another tab uh, that you can create a group so you can uh, create a new group and select which users are going into this group once again this will be very helpful if you are in a small company uh, and you want to place uh, certain groups to, to access certain folders and uh, just access that those folders that, that you want. Uh, so not everybody is seeing uh, everybody's work. And then we have the shares. So regarding the shares is the folders that you want to um, that you want to to create on your device one really nice thing is that in this uh, model here we can delete the public uh, folder uh, well we can delete all folders that were created by standard uh, so all you have to do is press the minus button and press ok and it will delete for me it will be great because my old device didn't have this option I could create new ones I could delete new ones but the ones that came uh, from factory were not um, available to to delete so in here you can uh, select that you can also enable recycle bin tell us uh, or tell the device if you are using that for streaming any media for streaming or not um, in my case I will not use this one I'm using on the other device will, which will be using uh, all my media to, to, to stream um, and then if you want to allow FTP access, web dev access, or NFS access. If you are using um, media to stream, NFS is very useful, it's very fast uh, protocol instead of usual SMB. So you might want to check that out. Um, and this is it about the shares. As you can see, we have here our um, USB plugged in. Um, in this case that the traveler t 3.0.1 you also have the information right here uh, of the usb that you connect and the usb devices that you connect i think you can connect uh, more than two if you have a hub connected to the ex2 i haven't tried that but um, theoretically it is possible um, okay so this is it regarding the shares you can just create as many as you want um, and you are good to go and start placing your data uh, organized in your place and then we have the cloud access and on a cloud access uh, you will just have to uh, create a an account so that you can uh, connect your devices smartphones tablets uh, through the uh, let's go here let's place through the My Cloud um, app, which is the WD to go. Uh, as you can see here, I've got two devices. This one is not enabled to be accessed. Uh, I never found it very useful to access the device this way when I'm out of my network. Uh, what I do is I access it via FTP. Uh, and this one, I will be doing the same, although I will be giving <laughs> uh, a shot and see how it works this way but um, i found out over this years that ftp works the best for me when i need to access uh, my device and i'm not at home so in here you can see that uh, the devices that you have connected to your network even if you're not at home so let's close this uh, and backups we will um, talk about this backups in one separated video so no point in in, in being here I, I will be making tests uh, it will be the next video. I'll be making tests um, to see how it works and um, to see how this device makes the uh, 
uh, backups. Now regarding storage, we will also see this in a separate video because it will take take a while. I will use every uh, RAID modes here um, and I will use also the JBOD. So if we go to change RAID mode, select OK. Um, we'll have JBOD spanning RAID 0 and RAID 1. So what I will do in the in the other video is I will make speed tests on all these mods and will tell you how these mods uh, work. So let's move on to apps. So in here, uh, right away, you will have one very useful thing. It's HTTP download. So if you want to make a download over the night, uh, let's say a client send you a link, um, Dropbox or something like that, that you want to download over the night um, it will be useful you don't have to to leave your machine turned on just place the url save to decide where to and if you want to rename it and if you want to uh, backup of course you can schedule that uh, download as well let's say you just want to download it tomorrow so <laughs> let's put uh, the date and the time and it will start automatically doing that um, download which is which is pretty useful um, you also have FTP downloads and um, same options here of course you'll have to make the uh, login method type uh, if you are used to work with FTP all this information here is uh, useful then you have the P2P downloads uh, to you can turn them on and add a torrent file and make the download of that torrent file uh, hopefully for legal purposes and you also have the web file uh, viewer so you can check what it is inside of each of these folders uh, right now i've got a 2.2 gigabyte test which actually shows as 2.10 but <laughs> nonetheless uh, which i'll be using to um, to make the speed tests on the video of the different RAID, uh, RAID arrays. Okay, and you can press the plus and I accept. You also find some more apps to add being Emul, Icecast, Joomla, PHP, BB, PHP might mean Squeezy Center, WordPress, Git, NZB Get, and Transmission. And uh, you also have the option to install an app manually. So you just have to click uh, and then um, we'll be good to go regarding app installation. Now on the settings page, you will have um, usual settings for the device, change the device names, um, change your time zones and um, configure whether you want to, to enable this device to get the time uh, from a server or if you want to do it manually cloud access if you want to enable or not uh, if you want to enable dashboard clouds cloud access dashboard is where we are right now so do you want to be able to uh, access your dashboard while you are not um, on your home network or office network uh, energy saver this is a nice uh, nice feature um, I have my turn on so as I will I'll I was saying in the beginning of the video, 10 minutes without uh, activity will lead you to um, to your device to go to sleep. Um, LEDs, you can turn them on and off, as you can tell by the screen, <laughs> uh, at any point. So let's say if you want to place this on your nightstand, I won't advise that, but on your nightstand, and you don't want to... Um, to see the lights just press there and the device will show no lights at all of course this will have um, some negative points which is you will have no light indicator to tell you if the device is working well or not um, so in my case i'm gonna leave it on and then you have the power schedule uh, which you can configure and say your shop works from monday to friday uh, you want to not to turn on on Saturday, not to turn on on Sunday, leave everything off. And let's say from uh, 9 to 9 to 5. <laughs> so you can set uh, all these um, according to your business, of course. 
I'm gonna turn mine off. I want to have everything uh, enabled. Uh, and then you have the Mac backups time machine you can configure if you use time machine you are used to it so you won't need this interface to, to configure your your time machine just create a uh, a folder and um, well the folder it comes by by default time machine backup but you can create any other folder with any other name and uh, just configure your Mac and it will make its thing regarding the time machine and then you have more services, distributed file system, active directory, and recycle bin. We also have network information. So as we can see here, my IP at the moment for this device, um, all sorts of options, uh, SMB protocols using two as device. To be honest, I cannot tell you the difference between one and three, I would have to research, uh, but I will leave this. I, I trust Western Digital. If it comes by uh, default, it's all right then. Uh, FTP access yes and then you have all sorts of acronyms here just uh, just read them network UPS um, for me I will be using my UPS to um, to power all my devices everything that you see here is powered by two UPS uh, but um, I will not see the need to connect this directly with the uh, with the device itself uh, and then we have the network group. You might want to change the group. Uh, remote server access on or off and port forwarding. And then you have the media, DLNA media server on or off if you want to stream media from this device or not. And then the iTunes. I don't use iTunes, but uh, I find uh, my brother is, is an iTunes lover. So this might be useful for a lot of people. Um, one thing that I would like to mention on the DLNA, it's using um, Twonky Media Server, which is a very good, uh, very good uh, software to uh, to stream the the media. Um, and let's go to do utilities. So system diagnostics, disk disk tests. Uh, you can make quick tests or full tests. Um, the device itself, it will make its own tests even if you don't ask to so it can give you the information anyway uh, system restore so if you want to restore this to factory uh, system configuration this is great once you have everything set up just save a file this will be about 1kb file um, and if by some reason your device needs to be reset resetted resetted <laughs> sorry about that uh, you just have to import the file and everything will be your passwords your users uh, your shares, everything will be uh, instantly backed up. So a little backup of this file will be great. Dev device maintenance, um, if you want to shut down, if you want to reboot, um, scan disk, format disk, so you can format all your, volume or all your volumes or you can format your uh, disk. Okay, and then we have ISO mount and ISO share, so you can uh, if you, for example, want to place a um, an ISO from one of your DVDs, you can do that and uh, easily share with with your network. And then you have the notifications, which you can enable, <coughs> sorry, by SMS or email. And finally, the firmware upgrade if it needs to be upgraded. And this is it regarding the uh, user interface. I hope it was helpful for you guys. Uh, on the next next test, we will be making the. Let me just check my. We will be making the speed tests uh, or the backups. I've not decided yet, but one of those two will be speed tests on RAID zero, RAID one, and uh, JBOD spanning, or the backups test to see how it works, taking the data from the device and put it on a USB uh, storage. Guys, if this was helpful for you, thumbs up. If not, the next button right next to it. And thanks for watching. My name is Roberto George.